Hi guys, I'm Tsuyoshi. Today, I'm going to break down the principles of side control. Yeah, which is super basic. Especially for beginners, it's very important to understand underhook, cross space, like how to make approach your opponent to control your position. Hope it works for you guys. Let's get started. Okay, the first I'm going to explain underhook and cross space. That's how you control opponent's upper body with your arms. Okay, the underhook. Okay, when the time I make underhook, I can easily keep it flat on the ground. Let's say here, I got underhook on his left arm like this. So as if I'm controlling left side of his body, it's very hard for him to come up to my side. Look, when he comes up to my side, he gets stacked because of this, okay? So this is the underhook. Means I gotta get my arm under his arm to control the far side of his arm like this. But on the other hand, if I get underhook, like this, look, there is no leverage for me to control his left side. He can easily come up to the side to get away. Especially this time, he's much lower under him, so I cannot even drive my way on him to pin. So this is what I have to avoid. Even though I want to drive my way forward when I get underhooked, it's pretty difficult to do. Look, he can easily come up. Look, I drive my way like this, but he's able to slide out. So the first priority, you have to get underhook, right? Get your arm under his arm, and then like this. The best case scenario, you want to cup his shoulder to hold it like this, without making a space around the armpit. This is not tight now. Yes, I got an underhook to cup his shoulder, but if there is a space around my armpit, he can easily get underhook back. So this is the battle. So that's what you want to even expect it. So here, you get underhook. Before you make it tight, he's going to get underhook back like this. You gotta get underhook back against this. This is kind of like a drill, okay? So in order for you to do it, you wanna be able to use your hands like swimming, okay? I wanna start with chopping his biceps with side of my hand like this. And then, as if I straight to my arm, look, I create his underhook, okay? If it's possible, I cut his shoulder with driving my shoulder on him like this, and then I can make the perfect underhook. But before I make, he may be able to get underhook back. Look, one, okay? So this is kind of like a secret story, like I do underhook. When he gets underhook back, look, this. Yeah, until I cut his shoulder, I wanna keep on doing it. I want you to be careful that even though you wanna make a lot of space, you're not gonna move your body to the side when the time you get under. This is a situation what he wants to do, okay? Once I tilt my shoulders like this, I can no longer get underhook back. Once I tear my shoulder like this, I cannot make the proper underhook. Even though I get like this, he's be able to come up. Look, then I'm going to lose the position. Well, that's why then the time I get underhook back, I want to make sure that I keep my armpit at the same spot to retrieve his action. I want to use below my elbow joint like this. So I use my arm in multiple ways. With my upper arm, I apply pressure on his forearm to retrieve his action. And then look how I rotate my forearm and wrist, look. Once I get my hand in, I can get an underhook. Then this is another detail. I want you to turn your wrist like this when the time you get underhook. This is exactly the same action as you're swimming like this. This is how you get your arm smooth, look. My thumb is pointed down and then I swim like this. If that is opposite, let's say, if my thumb is pointed out like this, like swimming, I cannot get my hand in, look. There is no pressure on his arm as well. So I gotta turn my wrist like this. As if I keep on touching his arm. Then I shoot. Then I cup his shoulder. I slide drive my way forward to pin him like this. Then I don't allow him to get under back. I use my shoulder. Sometimes if I need, I even use my head to block his arm. And then he cannot find a space to get under back. Okay, next one, cross space, okay? So the last one, I explained about how to control the left side's arm, like the far side with the underhook. Like this. this is the first priority I want to make. But on the other hand, right? From the near side, I want to hug his neck. That's the cross space. I can unlikely get an underhook from the near side. Look, if I cannot do that much. Most of the time, it's not realistic to do. So that's why instead of getting an underhook on the near side, I want to hug his neck. The cross face is like a control his face, okay? I start from my arm under his neck like this. Then this is how I control his face, okay? I use my shoulder and biceps on his jaw like this. As if I make him look other side like this. 
So once I do so, it's getting harder for him to turn to my side. Look, as a lucky space like this can come up to my side, look, I stopped him. So this is the purpose of the cross space like this. Yeah, I want you to understand how to make it tight, okay? This is not driving way forward like this. Of course, that's gonna be a lot of pressure on his face, but I have no base at all. If I drive my forward too much like this, he's be able to throw me like this, okay? I mean, I'm bounced. So that's why it's more like keeping my body at the same spot. There's a prior pressure on him. Oh, you want for me to do this, okay? Once I get my hand in like this, I cup his armpit like on the far side, like using my three fingers like this. And then instead of driving my way forward, I don't like to drag him. Look, I drag my elbow back. Right? I drag his upper body like this. Then at least I put my biceps on his face to make him face that way, okay? So this is how I make the cross face like this, okay? Then I don't need to apply pressure on his face, right? Even though the name is cross face, I don't want to like crush his face like this type of stuff like this. This is really nasty that it's not necessary to do it. I like to put my pressure on his neck from near side. This is how I control his face like this, right? Like this, not like a body space like this. So like I showed you, I drag his armpit to my side. So as I do so, I can slightly put my biceps on his neck like this, okay? So this is how I control his face. Once I set up this type of frame, okay, it's gonna be way harder for him to come up to my side, look. I completely lock it without driving my way forward. I still keep my way around the hips. That's why I don't get thrown to the other side. Even though he tries to throw me to the side, look, he cannot do that. This is as good as making an underhook, right? This time, I don't get underhook at all like this, but he cannot come up to the side. Look, like I showed you, this is how I make the cross face like this. Then once you understand the underhook the cross face, you wanna make the perfect frame to control his upper body, right? On the far side, I get underhook, the near side, I make the cross space, and then I'm going to connect both of my hands, like making a gable, like this. When I time you connect your hands, I want you to make sure that you do it without using the thumbs. This is very important to make the lock properly, okay? Like five fingers upon the same direction like this, like her monkey hands. And then, as if you're connecting and wrist each other, like this. Look, I don't use my fingers yet. Look, I connect my wrist each other like this, and then, as if I cover in my hand with my fingers. Look, I don't use my thumbs at all. This is how I make the proper lock, like gable lock. But on the other hand, if I use my thumbs, it seems like easy to make a lock like this, but this is really tiny lock. I cannot make the maximum leverage, right? I just make her lock with my thumbs like this. So he's able to pull my hand out. Can I just get my thumb in? So here. So this time if he pulls his hand with his both his hand, look, he can cut it. Even though I make it super tight. Look, can I just try again? He can cut it because I only use this type of part to make a lock, right? I want to make more space to make leverage. So that's why I start with list to list and then I hold my hands like this. This is how I make, not even palm to palm. This is still tiny to do this, okay? So once I make this one, he cannot cut it as like before. Can you just try again? Look, this is so tight, okay? Look. I may get pulled because of this. I'm really, really tight lock, can you just try again? Look but he cannot cut it at all. So this is a gable grip, like without using a thumb like this. Okay, I get cross face and under her. Then like I showed you, I want to stay up the gable like this. Then I'm not gonna drive my way forward, even though I put the pressure on him, okay? Yeah, it's gonna be really heavy, but I have no balance. Like the time I explained the cross face, okay? I like to drag him with the gable grip. Look, I drag, like pull his upper body. So as I do so, I can make tightness and pressure without driving my foot. Once I make this position, it's pretty difficult for him to throw me to the other side. Can you just try that? Look, I still keep my weight on my hips, right, without driving my weight on him. Even though he tries to turn to my side, he cannot do it at all because of the cross space. So this is the body lock control. Yeah, next one, like how to use your legs to make a base, okay? I wanna start with explaining about the best case scenario, okay? Best case scenario is to open his elbow completely and then you get your knee under his shoulder like this. The other knee comes right next to his hips. Like using your knees to block the near side. And then I wanna make the cross face and under hook. 
is going on. Yeah, this is the best case scenario. Once I establish it, he cannot turn to the other side or to my side. He cannot even use his elbow. This is what I want to make the best case scenario, like this, right? Like connecting my knee and the elbow on my left side. But sometimes I cannot expect a movement. Before I make it super tight, he poses his right elbow like this. Yeah, this is a bad sign. If I allow him to do it, he's be able to scoop his out, like chopping my hips, then move his hips. Look, there's been a gap between me and him. Then he's going to pull his right knee to recover the position. So that's why when he chops my hips, you have to create out, right? So like switching a base, okay? So then I'm gonna show you without using a hands, okay? It's like a drill. I'm gonna switch my base, right? I slide my right knee under his triceps, like this. As I'm pushing up, right? And then, next thing I'm going to switch my base again, right? As if I slide in my knee, left knee under his shoulder, look. And then, I'm gonna get back to the original position. Yeah, I want you to make sure that I keep on trapping his right arm with my leg like this. And then, I get back to the original position like this. Okay, you can do that as a sequence drill. Whenever he pulls his elbow in, look. Right, you gotta switch your base. You cannot do this, okay? Other side, one. Then this is gonna be the hardest part. You have to switch your legs smoothly without making a gap each other, look. I keep on connecting with him, with one of my legs. Then I go. Let's say if there's a gap between my legs, like so here, look. He's able to find a space. That's why as if I pulling up his triceps, I wanna size my right leg. And then by the time I switch, as if I scoop it under, look. Then I come back. So I show several times, he pulls his elbow. Look. One, two, okay, one more time. This. So this is how I trap his right arm. Okay, sometimes I cannot find a movement. Okay? He pulls his elbow so tight, then he's about to connect his right elbow on his torso. So in this case, I can unlikely do the last technique. So in this situation, I want to change the base, it's like sprawling his arm to dominate the frame. Good job, there's no space at all between his torso and elbow that I cannot slide it in. So, as if I'm doing a sprawl with my left leg, look. And then, I use my hips to pin his right arm, like this. Then most of my is on my hips like this. So that's why it's a bit difficult for him to push my hips. Even if there's no corner to chop. Then I can retrieve the position. Then he made a hip escape against this. Look, I chase his hips with my knee like this. I can do the sport with both of my legs like this, right? It's a lot of space. He can easily find space to get his knee in. Right? That's why I use my right knee to block. Look, then he cannot find a space here at all. The other side, I dominate his frame, like this. Then I can stop his movement. He may move side to side, look. I keep on sprawling, then I drive my right knee on his hips like this, and then I stabilize. Then once I can find a space, like he tries to push my hips like this, then I should be able to find a space under his right elbow. I switch, and then I do it again. I should one more time, pull his hips, look. If I stay here, this is gonna be a bad sign, okay? I do sprawl, look how I do sprawl like this, like pressing down his forearm with my hips and belly. Then I can dominate it. Then I just wait for a time and he gets tired. Like he may push my hips so hard. Look, this time he's going to lift up my hips with his forearm. Look, he uses his face on his elbow, right? I slide it in and then I do like last one. So this is how I create an arm to make good base.